Hello and welcome to the Office Dev Show, the show all about office development. Today we're going to be doing another install of the Getting Started series, uh, this time focusing more on the client-side development of okay. things connecting to Office 365. That's right. So we've done you know, a few more kind of server-side things. We looked at things like Python and PHP. And so now we're going to take a look at client side. There's there's a lot of um, you know growing momentum around that area, even really on the server side. If you think of things like Node. Yep. Uh, but today we're going to kind of start off a little bit smaller, physically actually smaller, with some mobile things on the client side. Excellent. And this is great um, for cross-plat as well. That's right. That's right. So we're going to actually look at how we can build uh, cross-platform mobile applications using. Apache Cordova and Visual Studio. So we're going to actually connect in to Office 365 and be able to consume some of the great APIs that are there in one of those apps. Awesome. Cool. Let's get going. All right, let's do it. So, you know, what we're going to start here is is in, inside of Visual Studio and, and Microsoft has made a big commitment to the Apache Cordova tooling um, inside of Visual Studio. So Starting with Visual Studio 2013, you could actually go and install the Apache Cordova tooling. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing in, in 2015 here is that I don't actually have to go out and get a separate install package to get the tooling. It's part of the default setup. When you go and set up things, there's a checkbox that says, I want the Office tooling, and I might also want the Cordova tooling. And so um, here it, it's put everything I need to start working on one of these projects. That makes it much quicker to get started. That's right. right. So I'm going to go out here and just uh, create a new project. And um, if you're not familiar with Cordova, it's basically we're going to be building a mobile application, a native installed mobile application using client-side technologies like HTML5, CSS, yep. and JavaScript. Now, um, the interesting thing about this is, is it is going to install all of those web assets on the device so it can run disconnected. Um, and it can even, there's all these great plugins to do really advanced things. So I can use the camera, the accelerometer, all these different things. It would be hard pressed to tell that it's a mobile application, uh, uh, a web application. Um, it's really wrapped up as a true native app when it gets installed on the device. But you don't need to know native Android development. That's right. It, it's all of that's abstracted away from you here. It's so easy to be able to do that. And we might take a, a look at some of that as we get into our sample. Yep. So um, the reason I kind of went into that intro is because where you find the template for Cordova, it's actually under JavaScript. So you see that I have all my organized languages here. And if I go under JavaScript, you can see there's the Apache template. So I can go create this blank um, Apache Cordova app. So we'll call this the uh, Cordova contacts. We're going to go out and maybe reach into the contacts that I have in Office 365 and see if I can't pull those into this application. So I'm going to go ahead and say create. And um, it's going to go and create this default project for me. And if you look, you'll see that it starts to look very much like a web project. I have things like an index.html file. Well, that's a little bit weird there. An index.html, I have CSS, I have a scripts library. Mm -hmm. And those are what you'd expect in a web project right. because it pretty much is. Um, now, it does have some additional things like the plugins to make it a little bit more um, have that native feel. Uh, but right off the bat here, I could actually go run this project. It has a, a start page, and it would install as a native app on my device. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is that the one area that Cordova tends to be lacking in is giving a native look and feel on the mm -hmm. device because it doesn't have the native controls. It's HTML, right? So that's what's getting rendered on the device is HTML. So there's actually some really good frameworks you can use with Cordova. There's a, a number of them that are out there. I'm going to use one today called Ionic, okay. so the Ionic framework. And this will give you controls that look identical to controls you'd see on an Android device or an iPhone or something like that. Could you pull in things like Bootstrap or even Polymer or any of those? Absolutely. Really, you can use any client-side web technology for the most part you, you would ever want in these projects. So I could go and pull in jQuery, nice. Angular. In fact, we're going to use Angular um, in here. So the Ionic framework is really based on AngularJS and the concept of creating directives mm -hmm. um, that makes it very, very easy. You're going to see I'm going to build a pretty nice looking mobile app in 
something like five minutes. It takes no time at all. Awesome. So let's go ahead and reference that Ionic framework. So what I'm going to do, um, there's a number of ways you can pull in different frameworks. So Ionic actually generates templates with nodes. Mm -hmm. so you can run an NPM command and go generate a template. Um, there's um, Bower ways that you can go get the templates. Since I'm in Visual Studio, I'm going to kind of do a traditional way, which is actually go work with a NuGet package. So I'm going to grab a new NuGet package that I actually put together called the Ionic Visual Studio 2015. This is named a little bit different because in 2015, we changed the product, uh, the structure of the Ionic template a little bit. We started to organize things the way other mm -hmm. IDEs were organizing Cordova projects. So everything is under a www folder, all your um, assets that get de deployed to the device. And so if devs are moving from some other tooling, for example, but they want to get into Cord Cordova or Crossplat or Office 365 development, this will look a little bit closer to what they're more familiar with? Absolutely. In fact, if you go look at all, like, sam there's tons of samples of Cordova apps and plugins out on, um, you know, GitHub. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that this more aligns with, with those. So awesome. it's really getting us better aligned and more strategic around uh, Cordova. So I'm going to go ahead and install this Ionic uh, framework here. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. It's going to go and add a bunch of different script files. So this is mainly script files and a few CSS files that it's going to add to my project here. Um, and it's like I said, it's also going to bring in all the Angular JS things. So it's going to set up um, a, a, a module for me, some controllers, and um, get everything kind of wired up. So there we go. Um, it's done installing. And actually, without doing anything, I haven't really connected to Office 365 yet. Let's actually just see what this app does in this case. Um, there's not a whole lot to this. So what I'm going to do, uh, when, I, when I use the Cordova tooling, I do have the option of picking what platform I want to debug against. So if you look here, I can pick things like Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Windows, um, if I want to do like Windows running on ARM or yep. x86, there's all these different options for me to select. I'm going to go with Android here. And then when I select a platform, I have a second option, which is what do you want to use? Do you want to use an emulator? Do you want to use a physical device? Mm. So you have some options here. There are a number of emulators that get installed with the tooling. Uh, you can certainly use those. Now, I happen to have a physical device, and it's a little bit easier for me to display on the screen for you. And so that's what I'm going to use today. So I'm going to go here and say device. So we're going to actually use a physical Android device. And I'll go ahead and say debug. And did you have to do, real quick, did you have to do anything to make those options appear in Visual Studio, or are those just available? Yeah, they're, they're automatic. They're targets that get set up in the, as part of the template. As so. part of the template for the Cordova project. That's right. OK, so great. They're, all, they're already there. Nice. Um, now, I will say, though, I guess while this is loading, the one caveat around all this is if you want to debug for iOS, you really do need a Mac. So right. you, you, what happens is you set up remote debugging. Um, oh, that's a little bit odd. We'll try this one more time here. Didn't find my device. So we'll try this one more time. And if not, we'll move forward. Because you're not plugged in. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. You're welcome. Apparently, I wasn't plugged in. So let's, uh, it's going to. It's going to fail one more time. Let's try that again. Third time's the charm. <laughs> so we just say OK on this. Awesome. So if I, again, back to the, the story of the Mac, if I wanted to actually debug on a Mac, what we do is we actually, and I could show you in the tooling, there's a place where you set up a remote host to, for yeah. the debugging. And ultimately, you connect to that Mac machine. And, and that's what actually performs the build. All right, so it looks like our app is loading. Here's our app. You can see data goes here. It has home. Now, I can swipe to the side, and I get nice little menus. Uh, everything's really fluid and animated because of that Ionic framework. It builds all that for me. Um, in fact, this has a little pull down to refresh, which we're actually going to use that here in a moment. So when we pull to refresh, we're mm -hmm. going to go out and query Office 365 and pull in our context. Excellent. OK, so we have the scaffolding for a great mobile application at this point in time. But let's actually go forward and um, put it together with Office 365. So I'm going to go ahead and say Stop. And we make it really, really easy for you to connect to Office 365 from Visual Studio. 
So whatever project you might be working on that has a user interface, mm -hmm. in most cases, we support what we call adding a connected service. So what I'm going to do to this Cordova project is just right click it and say add a connected service. And you can see we have a number of different options here. So there's lots that you can go out here and explore. What we're going to concentrate on is this very bottom one here, which is the Office 365 APIs. So I'm going to go ahead and say configure. It's going to ask me what domain I'm going to use. Now, I will tell you that mobile applications in Office 365 are natively multi-tenant, meaning they can connect to anyone's tenant. Um, this is just really who's going to host that application. So I'm going to go ahead and put my rzdemos.onmicrosoft.com and click Next. So at this point, it's actually going out and connecting to Azure Active Directory so that it can register the application it needs to do all the, the work. So we'll go ahead and say Next here. Now I can pick what services I want to work with. And in this case, we're going to work with uh, contacts. So I might just say, let's read write contacts. And actually, I'm not going to use any of the other permissions, so I'm just going to say finish. And so at this point, it's going to go and add a bunch of additional files to my project. They're going to help me in just a few lines be able to authenticate to Office 365 and start getting data. So here it is. We're basically have everything pulled in. Now, for me to start connecting, it's, it's just one script that I need to include in my page. So here's my, my page that my, is loaded when my application launches. And at the bottom, you can see all my script references. So if I make this a little bit bigger, you can see I'm referencing things like jQuery. I have some uh, Angular things down here at the bottom. But what I'm going to add is a special file called the office365loader.js. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this in here. This is basically something that's going to bootstrap a whole bunch of other script files that we need to be able to work with Office 365. So if I were to open this, what you'll see is it's, it's basically adding things for discovery and the Azure Graph and um, Exchange and SharePoint. So these are just some of those things that it bootstraps in. So this way, devs don't have to figure out which libraries they need to pull in. They just pull in the one Office 365 script. And they're done. That's right. That's right. There's a lot of other magic that goes on behind the scenes. So there's a, a settings file. If we go into here, you can see it has things like my client ID yep. for my application. It has where I'm going to end up going to log in. And it has the redirect URL that basically the, the Cordova framework is going to listen for that redirect URL showing up. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to say, we're done. And we can start moving on in the application. Perfect. Awesome. So we have everything we need. Now we just need to add a little bit of code to actually perform the authentication and go and uh, start querying contacts. So I'm going to do that in my Angular service. So I'm not going to go into all the nuances of AngularJS, but um, Angular is built around an MVVM model. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to use one of my a service that I have here to do a lot of that work. So here's my service. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a function to get an access token based upon a resource. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define something called an auth context. And this is something if you've worked with any of our other uh, ADAL libraries for working with Office 365, you typically work with an authentication context. So now I'm going to go ahead and create this function. And we'll call it uh, get token for resource. And in this, we're going to pass a resource, which would be this is the service that we want to connect to. That's basically what a resource means in this case. Um, what I want to do is, is first check to see if this authentication context has been initialized. So I'm basically just going to do a really quick check on um, if not auth context, then I'm going to initialize it. So we'll just say a new 0365. You notice that I get IntelliSense here when I go and pull in uh, the, the Office 365 tooling here. It automatically gives me that. And it's not Office 3645, it's 365. Um, so we'll do 0365 auth.context. Awesome. The next thing we can do is use our context to actually go get an access token. So I'm going to say auth context.get access token. And in that, we want to pass the resource. So I'm going to pass that resource, which again, and that's the service that we want to connect to. And then what that's going to do, it's going to return um, a token for us. So we'll just go here and say token. 
And we probably should also handle the error exception, but hey, I'm not going to have any errors here. No, We're, you write perfect code. Ha happy path here, happy path. <laughs> Um, one other thing we do need is I could use things like um, our you know, setting up promises, but in this case, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to also put a callback in here mm -hmm. that we're going to send that token back with. So we'll just go and say callback, and we'll give it our token, and that's how we'll actually go and um, send those tokens back. All that code does everything for us for authenticating. Just that. So actually probably could have written it in like two lines, but just a few lines are going to do all the authentication we need. Uh, now for calling the services, we can set up a function on our controller here to do that. So let me just grab our service name, which is my app service. So let's set up a quick thing called my app service dot get contacts. And in this, it's going to be a function that again, we'll use a callback approach. Um, not quite as elegant as using some of the promises that JavaScript supports, but we'll go ahead and do that here. So what we need to do is call our brand new git token for resource. So for when we're doing something like uh, contacts in, in Exchange, we want to connect out to the resource of Exchange server. So we're going to do, uh, or Exchange Online. So we'll do outlook.office365.com. And then finally, we want a callback for that. So we'll simply say what's going to come back for this is um, a, a token, because that's what that git token for resource is. From here, I can simply start working with normal REST calls. I can just go start making a REST call. Mm -hmm. The only thing I need to do is, like all of our APIs, we want to make sure we include that token on every request. So let's do that here really quickly. Let's set up some default things on our HTTP object. So we're going to say HTTP, and we're going to say defaults. And on our headers, we're going to add a little bit of additional things to set our authorization on this. So we're going to set our authorization header equal to a bearer token, not Sarah token, but a bearer token. And on that, we're going to tack on our token. So that's going to set up that token on the header for us. One other header I'm just going to do really quickly before we move on is I'm going to set what we're going to um, uh, post, so or what we're going to, I guess, require back. We want JSON back. So we'll go ahead and say defaults, headers. In this case, we're going to say uh, our accept is going to be uh, application JSON. And we'll also say oh, we want it as OData. Okay, so now we can actually make our call. So we'll just say HTTP.get. And we're going to get a specific URL here. We'll say outlook.office365.com slash API. We're going to do the v1 version of my contacts. So we'll say me.contacts. And then finally, uh, we'll do a success on this. And that data is what we're going to pass back when this is called. So we'll simply finish this off with callback. And we're going to pass in data. And the data comes back with a set of values. So I'm going to just say value here. So I think we have just about everything we need to wrap this up. Let's just go ahead and wire the last few things. We'll go into our controller where we have our refresh. So here's where we're actually refreshing the UI. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do is we're going to inject our, our factory into this so that we can actually make the call. So we're going to use my app service here. So this is just um, we're doing dependency injection here. It's an Angular thing. If you're not an Angular person, just ignore it for now. It's not really that important. Um, for the broad Cordova um, thing, but we'll go ahead and say, we're going to do a git contacts. And now, we will put a callback in here that's going to give us our data. And what we'll simply do is say maybe data, uh, or we'll, on our scope, we'll say scope.contacts equals data. And then when that's all done, that's when we'll stop the little refresh waiting thing.
So we have a little waiter that tells us when we're refreshing. The final thing is just putting this in our actual template. So the view part of this, if we go to view home, you can see I have just static data, but what's I, what we'll actually do here, let's do an, uh, a repeat. So we'll do an ng repeat, another Angular thing, and we'll say for every contact in contacts, and what we're going to do is maybe sp spit out their display name. And I believe it is contact dot, I'm going to go with display name like that. And I hope that's right. So we'll try. All right, let's give it a go. So this is actually going to go and start deploying this to the device. I'll move this a little bit more so you can see the as it goes and builds. Um, and I'll pull up the device as well. Uh, the other cool thing is that everything that I do here, whether I'm using an emulator or a physical device, can be debugged. So I can actually set breakpoints in my JavaScript nice. and actually see what's going on. In fact, it might make sense for us to do some of that. Yeah, Let me okay. actually go here really quickly as our application launches. And um, let's add maybe one right when I'm getting my access token. So I'll just show you the before and after so you can see the difference of when the actual login form is going to launch. Then let's put maybe another one once I get data back. So I'll just put a breakpoint here once I get some data back. So back at our application, you can see we're here uh, just like we were before. Yep. You notice that there's no data because we've made that a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to pull down the application. As soon as I let go with my finger, it's going to go and hit a breakpoint. So that's our first breakpoint. Um, it's saying we want to go and get an access token. Now I'll kind of move this to the side here so that you can also see my emulator. So I'm going to go ahead and press play here. And you can see that it's going and taking me to that login form, right? So it's, it's at this point, because I need an access token and I'm not logged in, it's right. saying, hey, hold on a second. We need to authenticate you. Yep. So I'll go ahead and type on this tiny keyboard here. I love this login screen. I mention it every time we do a demo that requires login, which is all of our demos, because it is so consistent. And we've made it this, um, you know, this thing that you know to expect. Devs know to expect it. Users know to ex expect it. And it always looks the same. And it's, it's ours, right? It's, it's not, ours. You're not seeing this third party um, thing. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit less of that login screen, because I don't want you to get my password. How's that for high tech? I like it. All right. We're all about security here. OK, we should be good. I have my password put in here, so I'll go ahead and say sign in. And the second step of this process is this is an app. It's a third party app, and we're wanting to connect into Office 365. So we're going to certainly warn the user that, hey, this application wants access to this data. And it's the same data we set up permissions for. So you can see it wants to read write my contacts. So I'll go ahead and say accept. And that's going to bring us back into our application. And you can see we just hit our, our breakpoint here where we got an access token. Yep. So our app has an access token. At this point, it can use that to go and make that call to get contact. So we'll go ahead and say play. And we should hit one more breakpoint, which is once our data comes back. So here's our data. And if we were to look at it, I can actually go and drill down and see exactly all the details. Here's Rob Howard. And um, at this point, I'll just go ahead and let it bind our data. And there it is. Excellent. So we got, in this contacts. case, it looks like I have like seven or eight contacts. And um, there's our app. And it's a great looking user interface. The cool thing, just a, a quick point on Ionic again, is I can even do cool little like swipe right, swipe left, like you have on a lot of list UIs yeah. in mobile these days. So there you have it. I mean, that's pretty easy. Like, and I don't quick. know, five, 10 minutes to Very build an entire mobile app that connects to Office 365. That's fantastic. Thanks. And it runs on all platforms. It runs on all platforms. So if you're a dev looking to get into mobile development or even cross-platform development, and you don't want to take the time to learn native iOS or native Android development, this is certainly a great option for you. And you can use whatever JavaScript libraries you're most familiar with or prefer. That's right. right? Yep. Excellent. Yep. Actually, one other thing before we wrap, I know we were kind of wrapping there, but one other cool thing about uh, this is that if I were to actually stop the app altogether here and go back into it, one of the really unique things is that we handle all of the token caching yes. for you. This is a pretty big deal because, you know, as you saw me trying to type in on this tiny keyboard and, and log in, I don't want to have to do that every time. So if I go back into this application now and pull down on this application to, to do my data load, what you'll find is, check you it out. To log in. It automatically went and got my data because I didn't have to, we cache that token for you and do everything you need. So Excellent. there it is.
Fabulous. Cool. And this sample will be available? It'll be on GitHub. That's right. We'll have a, a link to it somewhere. Great. I will put that in the show notes. Awesome. So we covered cross-platform or mobile development, but don't want to have the overhead of actually learning how to natively develop on iOS or Android, for example. You can now use Apache Cordova with Visual Studio and with all of uh, your familiar and uh, chosen JavaScript libraries uh, to do cross-plat mobile development. Thanks so much. Thanks. Um, and happy coding. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.